Hello Algebra students, this is going to be the homework from eMath Instruction on unit number 9, lesson number 3, the square root function and shifting. So hopefully this is a help. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Alright, so here we go. Number 1, given the function f of x equals the square root of x minus 8 plus 3, which of the following is the value of f of 24? I would use my calculator for this. Uh, so I would store 24 for x, and then I would type in that function. Uh, so I believe it was, let me get it back up here, square root of x minus 8 plus 3. So square root of x minus 8. Now be careful because the plus 3 is outside of the radical, so I have to move it over, and then plus 3. And then this will take care of uh, the computation, 7. There we go. All right, number two, if g of x equals four times the square root of x, then g of 45 is, again, I'd use my calculator. Uh, so 45 store x, and we have four uh, square root x, 26.8. Ah, I see. All right, so what I would do, so we have 26.8. One way to do this is we could simplify it, put it into simplest radical form, but I'm going to test to see is 7 radical 5 the same thing. So I'm looking for the same decimal, 7 radical 5. Nope, not choice 1. Choice 2, 12 radical 5. 12 radical 5. 20, there it is. Same thing as 4 radical x, which was 4 radical 45. Now, again, could we do this by hand and, you know, simplify it into simplest radical form? Sure, but I think that's just a tad easier. Number three, which of the following values of x is not in the domain of y equals the square root of x minus 8? Remember, the domain is the set of all inputs that give, it, give a real output. Um, the one that wouldn't work here is number four. The reason why that wouldn't work is because if you do 7 minus 8, you get negative one, and the square root of negative one um, is not what we in math call real, although it is real, it's just the name we call it. It's an imaginary number. You'll learn about it, I think it's in algebra two. Um, but in any case, the answer would be four. Uh, number four, which of the following is the equation of the square root graph shown? Uh, so, the square root function typically starts at zero and goes like that. This has been shifted down one. So that means we can eliminate choices one and four because of this piece right here. It's got to be down one. So it's going to have a minus one at the tail end, right? And then it's been shifted four units to the left. Now this is where it gets, it's a little backwards of what we would assume. We would assume it would be a minus four but when it's a shift left or right, it actually is, if it's shifted left, it's a plus. If it's shifted right, it's a minus. So this would actually be number two, a shift left of four and down one. Number five, which of the following gives the range of the function y equals these lines here mean absolute value of x minus one plus seven. It says create a sketch by hand. So um, this plus seven means it's going to be shifted up seven units. This minus one means it's going to be shifted right one unit. So its vertex is going to be at one comma seven. And it's going to do something like this. Uh, absolute value function looks like a V. All right, so uh, we're asked about the range. Now, range is the y value, so let me change to. So the least y value that we have is 7, and then it goes up from there. So we need something that says 7 or up, which I think is number 3. y is greater than or equal to 7. Uh, number six, the bottom edge of a 16-foot-long cantilever 
It is given by the equation y equals 2 square root x, where y is the distance from the bottom edge is from ground in feet. I had to look up what a cantilever was. Um, here it is here. Cantilever. It says it's a long projecting beam or girder fixed at only one end used in bridge construction. Um, images. I don't know what it was. So here's what it's talking about. So I guess not just in bridge construction, but so basically something fixed at one end. Um, in any case, uh, I had to look that up. All right, what is the value of B, the height of the cantilever in feet? So <clears throat> if you take a look at this end, when X is 16, it meets B. So if we find F of 16, or if we replace X with 16, we'll find uh, how high that is. So uh, Y is equal to 2 radical 16. Uh, we could do this on a calculator, but I can tell you that uh, square root of 16 is 4, and then 2 times 4 is 8. So the height is 8 feet. All right, and then this is saying to the nearest tenth of a foot, what is the thickness T of the cantilever at X equals 6 feet? So we're going to do, uh, so we're going to find this, okay? Uh, so Y is equal to 2 radical 6. All right, we could get a decimal value, but that's not going to give us the thickness. The thickness is going to be this minus this. So it's going to be 8 minus 2 radical 6, which I'm going to do on my calculator and then round to the nearest tenth of a foot. So 8, let me clear out, 8 minus 2 radical 6. Uh, about 3.1 feet. Number seven on the grid below, uh, on the grid shown, uh, y equals the square root of x is graphed. Without using your calculator, create a table and graph y equals negative the square root of x on the same set of axes. So, um, if x is 0, then this would still be 0. If x is 1, then this would be negative 1. So 1, negative 1. Uh, if x is 4, then this would be negative 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 2. And if x is 9, this would be negative 3. So 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, negative 3. So it does something like this, All right? Explain the effect on the graph of y equals square root of x by multiplying by negative one. So basically what happens when we put a negative there? Um, I would say something like it is reflected or flipped. Over the x axis. Something like that. All right, number eight. Graph the function f of x equals negative square root x plus three plus two on the grid below. Show the table that you created by hand or using your calculator. Then state its domain and range. Uh, let's use a calculator. So y equals, oops, y equals, I'm going to have to look back at it, negative square root x plus 3 plus 2. x plus 3, move the cursor out of the square root, and then plus 2. So let's look at the table first. All right, I'm going to try to find, so um, 1 comma 0. I'm going to try to find whole numbers here, 6 comma negative 1. Let's see if I can find one more. 13 negative 2. 
uh, which I don't think we have room for. Uh, so let's let, let me go back here. I think it's uh, negative two one, negative three two. Right, so to graph this, uh, 1, 0, right there, 6, negative 1. Uh, I'm going to use, I'm going to kind of skip this one, negative 2, 1, negative 3, 2. So it's going to look something like this. Now, um, the domain is how far left and right it goes. So the domain, it looks like this is far as far as far left as it's going to go. And that's at x equals negative three. So it's negative three or more. So to write that it's any x greater than or equal to negative three. The range is how high up or down it goes. So it kind of it's going to be right there and stop. That's a y value of 2. So it's any y value that is 2 or lower. So y is going to be less than or equal to 2. Okay. Hopefully that's a help. Uh, hopefully everyone's doing all right. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye now.